And Darren, you could wear stupid little hats like me. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another uh, episode of Glee on the Rocks. I am Emily. I'm Mandy. And I'm B. back again. Back in the house? I don't know where everyone is or where people live. We're all in the house. You can be yeah, We're literally that. all <laughs> stuck in the house. Excellent point. And if you're not, you should be, unless you're an essential worker, in which case, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, I would like to thank the Amazon guy who just dropped off five packets of um, toilet paper. Nice. Oh, I'm cool. not hoarding. I We just haven't been able to find any. And Amazon Prime now was like, yeah, you can put five in a cart. And I did it. And until the dude showed up on the porch, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to show up at all. <laughs> that it was just a lie. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, so we finally have toilet paper again. It's weird. Stop hoarding. We're not... It's not a hoarding situation yet. Um, well, this is not an episode about social distancing, but I suppose we could make it into one uh, because I think we can all imagine what the Glee pandemic episode would be like. Oh, God. Uh, mm -hmm. They would absolutely do a reprise of Don't Stand So Close to Me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shu conducts choir class over Zoom, making everyone <laughs> prepare a song. Yeah. And it looks like the Brady Bunch. Yeah. They're all singing heads in a Brady Bunch square. I think we just wrote it just like that. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. Again, you're you're welcome, Ryan Murphy, if you use that for the reunion special. It's just a one night reunion special where they're all zooming in to do a read through. Yeah, I was gonna say it's even better if it happens during quarantine or during lockdown. Exactly. I think we've solved it. I think we've yeah. got our reunion special all put together. Um, we'd like our royalties via PayPal. I'll uh, take Venmo. Um, I did, some, some Venmo? <laughs> there was an article that came out where they asked a lot of different TV writers, like, what would a quarantine episode look like for your show? They did Parks and Rec and 30 Rock and a bunch of other ones, but uh, nobody called up Ryan Murphy, Ian Dornan, and Brad Falchuk. Oh, oh wow. what a What a shame. I know, just really missing from the Western canon there. Yeah, and it seems like all those actors are really, they're really busy. It seems like, it seems like they just wouldn't have time for such a thing. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we could do this all day. Yeah. Uh, or all night, who knows. Uh, so this episode that we're going to probably talk about, or maybe talk around depending on how we're feeling is asian f uh it is the third episode of the third season premiered october 4th 2011 which i'm told is a real year uh because it feels okay. so long ago um this is the summary in case you haven't seen the episode recently which why haven't you just rewatched it it's on netflix um after Mike gets an A- minus on a chemistry test, his father wants him to drop Glee Club, and he instead auditions for West Side Story. Mercedes also auditions, but refuses to share the role of Maria with Rachel when the two are to be double cast. She also quits the New Directions and joins Shelby's rival Glee Club. Brittany's campaign for senior class president kicks into high gear, and Rachel becomes a third candidate infuriating Kurt. Emma's parents visit and cause a flare up of her OCD. Finally, the musical's cast list is posted. Uh, this was directed by Alfonso Gomez Reon and written by Ian Brennan. Is this the most racist title that the show has or not? I don't want to say it's the most without having checked because I feel like <laughs> there might be another, but it's definitely up there. I remember, I mean, we'll get into the actual episode, but like... It did feel like a show created by three white guys in Los Angeles. Like, is it is it their place to title an episode Asian F? Like, did they consult anyone about the legitimacy or proper usage of this? Yeah, I mean, I would 
I would like to say they did, but we all know they didn't. Just straight up didn't. I feel like they tried uh, to make it okay by like having the two Asian characters be the ones that said it to each other. I was like, yeah. that doesn't make it better. That I'm doesn't, just- yeah. Like, did you ask them if this was okay? This is where we need to do a crossover episode with Jenna's podcast and just be like, hey. Yeah. Thoughts on this title. Was it okay? Or was it one of those things where you had to be like, oh, it's so funny because you're yeah. my boss. <laughs> mm. um, so as the summary points out, um, the one of the main, well... The purported main storyline here is that Mike Chang finally gets his own episode. Uh, Turns out he's like in 10 minutes of this whole episode, despite it being about him. Um, But he gets an A minus on a test, which is apparently cause for family shame uh, that gets resolved in 42 minutes. So... There's a yeah. lot of like pain dancing too. He he's there like is. very sadly dancing a lot. Yeah. I mean, do you do you sad dance or is that just me? <laughs> Can't say I've ever just pain danced alone you in a dance just studio. Let it all out. I'm more I'm more the Mercedes flash dance style. I'm more the Mercedes style, like sad sing with no dancing. Mm. Got it. Except it doesn't sound remotely like that. How, how could it? Amber is such a queen. Yeah. I feel like Glee really tried hard in this episode to give Mike more of a personality because he's I know. such a background character. I'm so happy that they they gave Mike Chang a little more backstory and, and some depth into the character outside of dancing and also what dancing means to him. But then they still were like, his personality was still dancing. Like They did not add anything new to this character except that he has judgy parents right it's that he's asian and he dances which were two things we already knew about him we didn't learn anything spectacular about mike chang's inner life just that shockingly uh an asian character on american television has strict parents yeah which i think was a surprise for everyone right that that was a Oh, yeah. A trope Just, that was going to be written into this. Like, oh, he has uh, strict parents. No really one saw that coming. Stuff, yeah. Groundbreaking depictions of diversity on TV. I, wasn't there also like an immigration part to the storyline? It's been so long since I watched the episode now. They're like, we came here to give you these opportunities. Like, it was just, they really drilled down. <laughs> they really went for it. Um, they, I think they had a checklist of stereotypes. Yes. Yeah. And they were just like, all right, we're hitting every single one of them. Yeah, his dad wants him to go to Harvard. Uh, he wants him drug tested for getting an A-. minus. Um, he doesn't like the girlfriend because she's, she's a distraction. And his mother harbored secret dance dreams in her past so it really just runs the gamut yep and that is how they wrapped it up in a beautiful 42 minutes it, i mean like there's nothing new here i did appreciate that he uh, has been practicing his singing because i think it called out that of everyone in a glee club and as we learned from your mini episode you kind of have to be able to sing to be it's in kind a of show important. choir. Like the dancing is is important because they they go to town, but um, the singing part of a choir is key. Yeah, you got to be able to hold somewhat of a tune. Yeah. Definitely. So I did I did appreciate that he was like, oh, I've been I've been working on my singing, and I really want to audition for a, a part in the school musical where you have to sing and not just be the dance captain. Um, I love that he got a solo because this is Mike's first solo since he and Tina did that duet where he didn't really sing, right? He was just he danced, kind of like yeah. talking. He was yeah. like talking and dancing. So yeah, the, I, uh, the, is, I couldn't even sing. Yeah, yeah, yes, I was hearing it in my head. I yeah. think this is the first and only real Mike solo, if I remember right. Uh, that seems right. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he has any more besides this. So this is really his moment. His, his one moment to shine. Moment. The episode is titled after him, and yet most of yeah. it is dedicated to everything else. Like, 
the the time in this episode is really kind of spread out across multiple storylines but you would think for it being titled asian f he might get a little more spotlight yeah they don't even really tie the other storylines to his storyline very much no no not not at all there's like a little bit of like okay he's unappreciated and like mercedes is unappreciated Sort of, or like I maybe I see that because I know they're both underutilized characters, mm-hmm. right? But besides that, I'm even like, hmm. I guess I guess like Emma also has a problem with her parents, <laughs> right? Yes, it's because uh, being a ginger and uh, your parents are ginger supremacists. You- <laughs> ginger supremacists. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I guess Coach Beast uses him to improve the football team's coordination. Right. Which was, I guess, a nice callback to the um, the Super Bowl episode where they did the dance, the whole zombie dance thing. Right. But that doesn't really include thematically um, into anything else. Yeah, it's not anything Unless, new for Mike. No, it's nothing new. Because um, why would there be? Speaking, I guess, of nothing new, Mercedes is out of shape because she is a fat woman i guess i don't this this mercedes can't mercedes can't do boot camp is like go fuck yourself i can't Uh, yeah also because like she's already been in the glee club for what two years now she's been dancing she Mm -hmm. dances at all of the regionals sectionals nationals and now she's out of shape what was she doing before It's really so baffling to me, like, coming from a real show choir background, but also just logically that this booty camp is only for very select people Mm -hmm, who were mm -hmm. selected in a stupid way. Like, they they were all returning members who had all been in the show choir before, done at least one whole season. Most of them had done two whole seasons of show choir. And, like, all of a sudden, he's like, yeah, you got to step up your game. But not everybody. Or... Yeah, the rest of you can just coast, but you guys. But they only left out like five people or something. Like they really... well, there's only ten people in the club. <laughs> yeah, they really made everyone go to this booty camp except who? Rachel and Tina. Yeah, and like we've seen Tina dance. Like what the fuck? Like I <laughs> really not. Yeah, you're right. Wow, I don't think that even occurred to me that like this was basically the whole Glee club. And I yeah. guess not well, Artie. <laughs> <And everyone laughs> else. Uh, well, and also, so in the last episode, Blaine was like, oh, I should, I want to go to booty camp as well. And he is not there in this episode. So I guess he right. passed. He, he's just going to go the one time. The one, yeah. <laughs> he learned the moves in uh, an hour after school and he's good to go. Well, he does have yeah. that warbler training. Well, his they really. Step touch man. Mm-hmm. His. It's amazing. He learned. <laughs> he learned from the best. Um, well, they really only did booty camp to set up. It's all over. Yeah. Yes. And the cast that was going to be in all those different parts. Because was was Puckerman in booty camp last episode? I think he was. Yeah, okay, no, because he was. he was just in the background. Yeah, because he's always kind of been a little like, I don't need to try. I don't need to do this. So he was just kind of in the background. Yeah. Okay. Where we like to keep him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he can stay there. He can hang out there. Um, yeah. So I, we can jump too. I, I don't have an order of operations here, but it's all over is quite the production number. Stay out of this, fan. This is between Santana and me. Well, it's between me too. I'm as much a part of this group as anybody else. And I'm tired. Happy I'm tired. Of all the problems you're making up. this change it was you it was you always thinking of you always thinking of you i the song doesn't really fit other than a few lines during it okay they shoehorned it to fit because i haven't looked at the original lyrics from dream girls but i'm guessing they changed probably 25 percent of the lyrics to be more specific um yeah because she sings like 
a specific number of years that she's been in Glee Club or something. And like, of course, they change all the all the lyrics. Um, I'm not mad about it because I love that number. I have always loved it. I don't know why. I think I just love like ensemble songs, period, in this show, especially when yeah. lots of people get solos. Like those are always just fun. But um, we all know why. It's the Kurt Lover and me, his line. The Kurt Lover. <laughs> That's it. When he, when he hits a showstopper. Those, yeah, the, that high note. And the, and the pink suit, like, you just can't, you can't top it. It's so good. Uh, yeah, I remember, I can't remember, I said I remember and then I can't remember. Like, <laughs> those aren't, they're both just placeholders for me putting a thought together. At the time, I feel like there was a bit of discourse of Kurt being dressed like one of the female characters again. Because he's the only yeah. dude in the pink sparkly jacket. And now all the women are in their sparkly dresses. I think it's just because in Dreamgirls, that song is sung by one of the Dreamgirls. Yeah. So he had to have been, you know, to make the song fit, he had to have been in the group with the girls or whatever. Uh, yes. Well, and, now, and So I'm quickly looking over the lyrics and they're... You know, the whole thing of you've been late, you've been mean, you're getting fatter all the time. I'm wondering if they just, if, um, what's his face, Murphy picked this song and then was like, all right, now we got to build a storyline around story this line. time. I bet you money. That's exactly what happened. He was like, he heard this on like Sirius XM one night and was like, shit, I got to put it in there. How do we, right, we have a fatter <laughs> actress. Perfect. <laughs> I'm sighing because you really just nailed it. Like, that <laughs> <That's happened>. exactly. <laughs> it's just driving down the 101. Like, oh, that's a good song. You know that like Ryan, Ian, and Brad have a group text and whoever it was was like, wait. Wait. I got, got it. it. Yeah. It'll be perfect. Because it really doesn't make much sense. Like this, this storyline of Mercedes being late and not checked in and stuff how does that go with also her like auditioning for the musical like I don't know yeah there's like, no connection there and we've already done the um Mercedes the diva last season right with um yeah. what was the episode that everyone hates night of neglect right she plays yeah. she's you know they get her um Lauren Zeises gets her to play the diva and she's gonna right you know, not work, not practice, not do all this shit. And she gets over it. And now she's doing it again, even though she's really invested in the musical. I don't. Well, and it, the musical thing is so interesting too, because it's like, okay, with booty camp, they're like, you're late and you're not trying hard enough basically. Yeah. But with the musical, I, I wouldn't say, I, I, it was, seems like she showed up on time. She was prepared. Like yeah. she dressed the part. Um, her mm. audition song, uh, Spotlight, a banger. Uh, yep. She was dressed in this beautiful like evening gown, even though um, Britt was in her fucking Cheerios uniform. Yes. Like she clearly <laughs> was giving a lot of effort into the musical. And it it they didn't even make a connection of like, oh, she dropped. She like stopped trying hard in Glee Cup club because she was trying so hard for the musical or something like they just somehow both of these mercedes are existing at the same time in the same place maybe there are two mercedes it's the only thing that makes sense have we Did thought about yeah have we thought about that that maybe there are two mercedes like the outsider style where there's the real one and then there's the one that's trying to take over for her Spoilers yeah. for The Outsider, <laughs> in case you didn't know what the story was about. There are two Mercedes, and they're both desperately trying to leave the narrative of the show. <laughs> they're both trying to get out of their contracts. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in Mercedes' storyline, she and Rachel both want to be Maria. And they um, are forced to do a... Not even, well, I guess a callback, but they're forced to do a Maria off by singing out here on my own. Um, I have worked on Broadway, but I have not been an actor. Uh, B, I don't know if you know anything about, would they make, would they make them do this? Would they make two people 
compete head on for a role? So in my show choir experience, um, if you didn't get to listen to the mini-sode, uh, which we you did, should really listen to, we we went on for a long time. Yeah, uh, it was awesome. Um, so when I was in show choir, when we had solos, we did have to audition in front of the rest of the class. Okay, um, because auditions would be you know just in during the class time or like during practice. And I think they kind of had the philosophy that like, okay, if you can do this in front of your peers, you can do it in front of like an audience. Um, so even though like our original auditions for show choir were more private, solo auditions were always in front of everyone. Okay. Now, did we have a full backing track <laughs> and <laughs> head to head and put lots of pressure on it? Um, no, but this is also for the musical as well. And I can't remember, I never had a callback for a, like a school musical. Yeah. That's the part that seems a little exaggerated. And I, again, I was not doing school musicals because no, but um, it, yeah, it just seems a little, yes, it's glee, but it, it does seem just to be a reason to put two of the best singers against each other and force one of them out to the next glee club. It doesn't seem, it seems yeah. contrived is... What it's I'm... very contrived too because of the results of it. Like if Rachel thinks that Mercedes won and Mercedes thinks that Mercedes won mm -hmm. and it seems like the audience thinks that Mercedes won, why is there a conflict on who they're going to pick for Maria? Um, yes, it just seems like there's conflict because Rachel always has to win. Yes, it's like you can't hurt Rachel's feelings yeah. and also you're just fat phobic and racist at the end of the day. Like that's really yeah. what it comes down to. Like Rachel looks more like quote unquote Maria. Right. Because like And if Rachel, she always gets what she wants. Yes. Like that's all yeah. it boils down to. Like it actually would have been really interesting if instead of double casting, they were just like, yeah, Mercedes, uh, she won this one. Sorry. Yeah, if literally it was it was that close that they were like, we would take either of you. You're it's just gonna be who sings this one song better. Like mm -hmm. it would have had to have been Mercedes. So they're just admitting that they're prejudiced against her mm -hmm. or that it's they're really frustrating given that everyone involved knows how many opportunities Rachel had and continues to have. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how harsh high school glee clubs are on like talent wins above everything, but I don't know. I feel like Shu is the type of teacher who sometimes mm -hmm. is like, Hey, let's let the people in the background, um, mm -hmm shine and then sometimes it's just like uh never mind yeah rachel Ex except when it comes down to competitions yeah never like mercedes never got like a competition solo except for her park and bark <laughs> where <laughs> yeah. she calls it at the end yeah. of the song I'm like that's not really a solo rachel gets whole songs yeah she gets whole songs and costume changes and like every boy like yeah she gets Rachel gets everything, and this is why we don't like her anymore. Yeah. And Rachel's not even gracious about this one time that she knows that she didn't deserve to win. Right. And, I mean, and her lack of graciousness extends to she doesn't get exactly what she wants, so now she has to go take the student class presidency, potentially, away from Kurt. Like, she can't give anyone anything. <laughs> like, if she can't fully beat mercedes then she's gonna go run for student class president to you know just to continue to like suck all the air out of everything else yeah i mean alongside her best friend that they, she was just like crying in a car with about how they both you know yeah now you know we talked in like i don't know the whole of the first season how if rachel had been that person the whole time if she'd been the cutthroat we're not friends. I'm here to succeed. I'm here to make it to Broadway. If you had cut all that crap with her and Kurt and their best friends and they're crying, then it would make more sense if she was like, yeah, sorry, we're both trying to get into the same school and I want to do better. I mean, it would make more sense and it would also just make a more interesting storyline. Yeah. Like, I don't know that I would like that Rachel more, but I would get an actual character out of it more. Yeah. As you opposed yeah. to just like yeah, you don't it's have like to like bullshit. her. Yeah. It's like all bullshit anyways, because the whole first season like was like, 
oh, this is Rachel Berry. She's in every single club. She's super high achieving. Right. She's like yeah. salutatorian. Like, and and now in the third season, they like forgot all of that stuff. Yeah, what happened to all the fucking clubs she was in? Like she takes dance lessons and she's involved in the community and like she would not need any help building her resume. No. Well, that's what happens when you have a boyfriend, guys. You just you just forget all that shit that you were doing for two years. <laughs> As all three of us will verify, boyfriends just aren't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not Especially. important, kids. Nope. Especially not in high school. Come on now. Yeah, you're probably gay anyways, so <laughs> don't, don't waste your time. I was going to say, if you're having boy trouble in high school, you're probably gay. Yeah. That's but that's... <laughs> about your losses. Cut, yeah. Advice for all you Gen Zers out there <laughs> now in the glee. Let this be a lesson. Mm-hmm. Think back on your high school years. Are you gay? Yeah. Did you see it coming? <laughs> Well, (laughs) I was going to say, speaking of gay, Kurt, (laughs) but then that just seemed like such an easy transition that I feel like we shouldn't do it. I don't know. The easy transition is very worthy of glee. That's true. Um, And like you already did it. I already said it. it. (laughs) So Kurt did not get the role of Tony in the school musical. Blaine did. But potentially for the first and only time, Kurt's pretty gracious about it. He brings Blaine potentially real flowers. I'm not quite sure. Beautiful flowers. They're beautiful flowers. And I have nothing to hate on this scene. Like, I would love to come up with something like, oh, Kurt's just being, he's putting his feelings aside. Like, oh, it's so nice of him. He's putting his own feelings aside for his boyfriend. (laughs) So, like, I I got no complaints other than they should have fucking kissed. You know it. I know it. They knew it. Like, I, I remember the first time I watched this thinking, okay, is this about to be, like, a thing for them? Like, an entire plot line about, like, being a gay couple that's out in a public high school? But no, it was literally just one scene. Just that one time. Where, <laughs> that one they shoulder had- clap. <laughs> <laughs> where that, that straight boy shoulder pat that... Yeah. Yes, my okay, but- friend... Cool. Gave me these beautiful roses. You know, um, Blaine's eyelashes were really popping, though. I'm on they, eyelash watch now. You know what? Blaine's whole face was popping in that scene. He really was beautiful. I, I feel like scene. Kurt's face was as well, but that hat was so distracting yeah. that I couldn't look below it. <laughs> so I was really much more focused on uh, Blaine's coquettish, um, you know, 18th century Jane Austen face that was like, my word, these flowers. <laughs> as, little... as, I, as I watch these episodes, I end up feeling like this was it. Like, I don't, we didn't really know it at the time, but this was like the pinnacle of claim. So it feels vintage to me. Dude, you know, yeah, dude. <laughs> Misty watercolored memories. <laughs> yeah. Misty watercolored memories. Like, yeah. if only we had known that the beginning of season three was going to be the height of like flirty dates and like screen time screen time we might have enjoyed it more but this time we're like oh he gave him flowers that's so fucking awesome i wonder what we're gonna get next nothing (laughs) like breakups we really couldn't (sighs) just enjoy a moment yeah and then we paid the price (laughs) just we held too tightly or we didn't even hold tightly enough to it it just slipped from our fingers And then when we wanted it again, Ryan Murphy was like, no, the ship's gone. I've moved on to my next plaything." So I think we'll have to we'll have to take it back to that beautiful line that Blaine says. You always zig when I think you're about to zag. And I, I just I love that about you. And I think if we hold on to that, we can make it through this episode. <laughs> That was my original Tumblr name for this fan. Because when I first got into Glee, I was like, well, don't really want any of my sci-fi friends knowing I'm <laughs> Glee right now. Oh, I feel long, that. I can't really like handle multiple blogs, but definitely for a good month or two, I was posting fic under um, Zigzag Warbler. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> wow. I think you're going to have to take it back. <laughs> That's so cute. I- 
I probably still have it. Um, I just stopped like ever posting there. No, you're fine. Um, I was just gonna say, if if giving flowers was the zig, what do you guys think the zag was that Blaine thought that Kurt was gonna do? I mean, do you want my blow is behind the bleachers? <laughs> well, okay, I wasn't gonna go in that direction. Oh, <laughs> I thought sorry. They might have been expecting him to be mad. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, your idea better though. <laughs> Real, realistically, yes, I agree that he probably thought Kurt was going to be pissed and take it out on him with like the silent treatment or uh, something. <laughs> Can you imagine someone like Kurt Hummel being pissed off at you? Yeah, oof, I'd probably never recover. No, Ugh. I don't want to think about it. Blaine doesn't want to think about it either. But it's all good. Uh, they have flowers on the stairs with the beautiful heart eyes. Ugh, it's a perfect scene. Except he, the kiss, but you know. Yeah, we'll pretend it's there. Yeah. He smells them before he walks off. He smells them twice. I know. It's so sweet. Acting it, choices, you know. I can like <laughs> bitch about the entire rest of the episode, but that scene, I was just like, damn it, this is it. This is, I know. This is what keeps me here. <laughs> Keeps you hanging on. It's what kept us on the hook for so long. They yeah. would just, there'd just be these beautiful little moments. Oh, with the claim theme yeah. too. The music. I know. You know? Ugh. I was just. You like, know, if you really think about it, that's exactly the whole of maybe the claim fandom's experience in watching Glee is those like every four episodes, you just get like a little, mm, a little taste. Yeah. And you're like, okay, maybe we're going to, it's going to get better again. And then it doesn't, but you're still waiting. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's clean in a nutshell. Great. Just blue ball in the phantom the whole way through. Mm. Just Brian Murphy had to get his kick somewhere. Eat and cry. To kick us. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, and this is a side tangent that can maybe just be cut, but I have to say it out loud. What is it with Brian Murphy making Darren Chris look like Blaine for the rest of his life? <laughs> He has to remind like, people, watch my show. Remember, you really like this character. Yeah, or like that. <laughs> that's still from that Hollywood show. Is like, is he wearing Blaine's clothes? Because it sure looks like it's it. It's the same fucking outfit. It is. <laughs> like, and why did, someone else sent me that picture and I was like, is this just a throwback? Oh, no, it's new. <laughs> like, why did Darren why? Chris let someone slick his hair down like that again? Why? I, you'd think the PTSD would just have him like running out of the makeup trailer. He was literally balding at one point. He was. <laughs> he was. Like, I, you sent that to our group chat. I mean, a like text thing. And I didn't open it because I was like, oh, that must be like a still from like. <laughs> Exactly. And then I saw the response and I was like, wait. <sighs> I just, I don't like who broke up with Ryan Murphy in high school or like what, who did he have a crush on who looked like that that he now just makes Darren look like this all the time? I don't, I need answers. And does Darren mind or is he just like, well, this is a paycheck? Does he even notice? Maybe he doesn't notice. He's been on Ryan Murphy's teeth for a long time, so it was part of the course. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah, do whatever you want to my hair. Just, uh, you know, sign the check. Maybe he has, like, an indemnity clause now where he gets Rogaine with his paycheck if they're going to do that to his hair. I hope so. Or, like, needs, B12 like, injections right into his scalp. Yes, I was going to say some deep scalp massage or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Something. Something. You gotta be careful with that, though, because Murphy might volunteer to do it. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh. Mandy. <laughs> Maybe he wants him to be bald like he is. Ryan Murphy's like, <laughs> Ooh, That's true. He did make Blaine wear a bald cap in that one episode. Oh, my oh, God. I forgot about so, that. I think maybe we've cracked the case. And Darren, you could wear stupid little hats like me. <laughs> that was a great Ryan Murphy impression. It was really. <laughs> Gotta find a way to like use that clip in the very beginning of the episode before we introduce it. So it's just you click start and all you hear is that voice. <laughs> wear stupid little hats like me. 
think we can make this work. There's your episode teaser right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, this will be the one episode Murphy does listen to and we're fucked <laughs> maybe he'll send us an angry email oh my god that would make my life it really yeah it would it really would um speaking of angry emails I don't have a good transition I don't have anything did for... we leave Schuster's storyline for last did we do that to ourselves <laughs> well it's that and all I mean yeah that's kind of all that's left other than Brittany Oh, yeah. running on girl power which gives us girls run the world so that happens uh you know I don't really have any. it's a great dance great uh great performance doesn't really propel the plot forward in too many ways uh, she also like gives a little monologue about her campaign before they sing that song and it was just not really based in fact or truth but i guess that's britney for you uh, yes <laughs> like, it kind of doesn't matter what she says at any given time you're just kind of like oh okay let's get to the song yeah like I just imagine chop, chop. maybe like heather and um oh no what's his name <laughs> mike harry show yeah um heather Jimmy. and harry both had it like in their scripts that they needed to do something this season right times. or so, they're gonna walk yeah so britney like they both basically got a little bit of a storyline because i mean britney running for president like was set up to be like the thing opposite kurt and then suddenly the end of this episode it's rachel Mm-hmm. because rachel takes over everything yeah but, i mean like the fact that britney was his campaign manager and they had that whole like thing last episode like that would have been enough Mm-hmm. and yet and yeah, it feels well to put run the world here in this episode. Yeah, it would have fit better, like, without the Rachel storyline, for one thing, but also in right. an episode that has anything to do with Britney besides that. <laughs> this would work better in any other way you could have done it. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, when did Santana audition for this musical? How well, I'm assuming as the only... Latina, they, they were like, wrote her in. <laughs> they kind of were just like, yeah, obviously. Also, speaking of audition, again, the only people in the school musical are people in the show choir. Yes. Like, there's nobody else. I literally wrote down, where are the drama nerds? Where are the drama I, nerds at this school? Do you, th- okay, do you think maybe it's like between seasons, like in some, it, some period of time that we don't get to see? They murdered them all? It's the only explanation. Why are they pulling from the Cheerios and the football players of all fucking people to yeah. be in this musical? Because there's budget for a school musical every year, but there are no drama nerds. I don't understand. Because even last year, what? It was Rocky Horror, right? Which was yeah, all three people. Yeah, it was <laughs> Rocky Horror. Did not have um, one single person. No, and again, Mr. Schuster, the choir director and Spanish teacher, was going to direct the musical. And play Rocky at one point, question mark? I can't remember. Yes, because yeah. that's appropriate. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the, <laughs> they had to double up roles because they didn't... They're, <laughs> yeah. Because they had too many people. Right, right. It doesn't make any sense. No. But it's Glee. Um, we did we did fuck up and, and we left Shu and Emma for the end and I I don't know how to get past this so we can just say Regret. that he he showed her his stash of porn and I don't know how to move on from that. Yeah, I would like to move on from that. <laughs> I rewatched that like three times and I was like, is he saying what I think he's saying? Mm-hmm. Wow, I like that you repressed it from the original watch. <laughs> yeah, it's like did not remember that one. Like people got mad, you know, out in i'm gonna say the south because that's where i figure these things happen about you know the depictions of gay characters and teen sexuality but not about mr schuster's big stash of porn they also didn't get mad about him planting drugs in a student's locker in the first episode so that's That's true it's it's, warning signs it's hetero it's okay hetero k hetero k (laughs) 
title of the episode? I no? <laughs> People are not going to okay. click on it. So like, no, I really I, not. That's not what I like, wanted. That, that's not why I'm listening to Glee. I wanted the opposite of that. Head or no. Um, it's terrible. I should have said that. I was thinking. It's not even funny. Thing. Okay, good. It's great. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, so we get a little Emma backstory. Well, one, um, once again, Mr. Schuster ignores his wife, girlfriend, significant others, uh, expressed wishes and goes behind her back to do something, i.e. inviting her parents over for dinner without warning. And it goes exactly as to be expected. Um, I did not anticipate a storyline of ginger supremacists, personally, the first time watching this. And I had absolutely forgotten about it until they showed up. I definitely had to. And I was like, oh, right. (laughs) These people. It's just such a weird way to do it. Like, if you want to have racist characters, like, I understand that that's not really cool to put on primetime television. But... It just, but like half your glee what, club is <laughs> making a mockery of it to have the, them be yes. ginger supremacists when you really want them to be, you know, white supremacists that you can't yep. say on TV. Like, it's just classic, like Ryan Murphy trying to cram every single kind of storyline into this damn show. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it would have been enough for her parents to not understand her OCD and her mental health issues yeah. and to call her freaky. And to make fun of her for scrubbing grapes. They didn't also need to be weird. (laughs) Like, they could have just been bad people. Yeah. Yeah, and it really makes no sense. Because the flashback that supposedly is, like, explaining her OCD or something. Because the mom is like, we don't know where she gets it from. And it's, like, flashback to baby Emma. And they're in breadsticks of all fucking places. (laughs) (laughs) And start cleaning their glasses frantically because they're server is not ginger and i'm like that's not even how ocd works like not even a little bit it just balls dropped on all sides on this storyline yeah there's really not a whole lot else to talk about because we all hate shu um emma is too good for him and he sings a song about wanting to fix her Because that's... I super hated that. <sighs> yeah. I did too, and I'd actually forgotten that that was the use of the song until the chord that. started, and I was like, oh no, he's literally singing a song about yeah. fixing someone with a mental health issue. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, the whole moment of like her praying and like trying to get him to pray with her, like... I could tell was trying to be so like poignant. I was just kind of like, what is happening? Like, yeah. Just, yeah. like more cringe on top of cringe. <sighs> it just, you just don't get it. Do you Murphy? Can't help himself. <laughs> That'll be a no. Um, yeah, I think that's about all that happens in this episode. I mean, there's a lot that happens in this episode is the thing. Um, if it all ties together, that's generally the problem, isn't it? I feel like this is an episode where they tried to do a lot, like in covering a lot of character ground and it just kind of all, the plot holes were really big in this one. Yes. I'd still like to know who murdered the uh, (laughs) drama kids. I, I made a note saying Santana just shows up at the beginning and says that she decided to rejoin after like, I know. The whole big storyline with her like exploding and the piano on fire and you know Do you remember how she set a piano on fire? Yeah. <laughs> like, or at and, least the Cheerios did. And Mike's dad is like all about him like only studying, but he's been a football player this entire time. Like I... <laughs> wouldn't that also be uh, that is true. Yeah, it's not that he's been practicing football what five days a yeah. week at least for three years? 
also he's a football player which clearly his parents like approve of but the football players are being like conscripted to be dancers in the show so (laughs) yes dad i'm gonna be a football player who doesn't dance yeah i feel like that would have been mike's way out of it be like (laughs) football coach is literally making us dance yeah it's not me i hate dancing i love chemistry and football hate dance she made us do it beast made us do it but yeah, th- those were the thoughts that like I ended up jotting notes down on. Just be like, what did the people who write this like not watch the previous episodes? I don't think they do. How did I not Honestly? even think of that? That he's been a football player this entire time. <laughs> yeah, the whole time, like whole pre time. Glee Club. <laughs> yeah, like he was introduced as a football player way before any of this. Oh my god, <laughs> what the fuck, Glee? <laughs> Uh, just it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. We're like, oh, that did happen. <laughs> Fuck. When you apply also what the Glee. writer said after the episode got filmed. <laughs> <laughs> the episode airs and they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Once again. Well, it's that. <laughs> you, do you remember, remember that post? Thing. I know. <laughs> do you remember that post where it was like images of the writer's rooms of other sitcoms and TV shows? Yes. And then it's the writer's room for Glee, and it's just an empty boardroom yeah. with a table. Like yeah, every okay. other room had like seasons and seasons of like, yeah. character development notes, so they remember Story everything. Arc. Yeah, Glee had nothing. Which is like, if you didn't know it, you you're like, yeah, you know. Even if you've yeah. never seen that picture, you're like, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> well. There were quite a few songs in this episode, at least. Um, do you have Do you have a favorite? I actually liked Britney's best, even though, like, contextually, as part of the episode, no, but like just as a song itself, that's actually what I've gone back and rewatched. Mm. Uh, Was it itself. because of her skirt? Possibly. Okay. Okay. No it's just a lot of women that. dancing, so uh, it, that, that it probably does have something to do with it. It mm-hmm. also got me excited. It's a great girl power <laughs> moment. Did you then cry a little bit over Hillary? Because I do. Uh, All right. Moment of silence. Take a moment. I was gonna say a moment of silence for Hillary and uh, Elizabeth Warren. Wow. <laughs> Okay, it's fine. Uh, Mandy, or um, uh, B, do you have a favorite song? You're the same person to me right now. It's fine. Um, Both Southern at school. I will say my favorite was It's All Over. I don't know why I love mm-hmm. that. I've always loved that scene. The first time I saw it, I was just like, just what a great use of... I, I always love in musicals when the song moves the plot forward. And this is probably mm-hmm. the first and only time in Glee that the song actually something happened in the song that then moved the plot forward because they just stole it from another musical and made it fit. (laughs) They just wrote the storyline and made the song fit. So maybe that's why I love it. But, and also Kurt in that song is just too good. It's just probably the best hair flopping back and forth when he does the little finger. What I was thinking probably the best like Kurt solo line in a, in a song that (laughs) there will ever be. So Excellent. What's your favorite? Um, I think it's Spotlight. Which is, it's another one of the songs where they definitely took it because of a few words in the song that make sense for the plot in the scene. Yeah. Like, I don't want to stand in your spotlight from Mercedes to Rachel. And then the rest of the song doesn't mean anything. But I just, I like the groove to it. Um, I really want to love Fix You because it sounds good, but I can't with a man telling a woman that he's going to fix her. Yeah. 
over <laughs> mental health issues too. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially in the past when he, I mean, he's gotten a little better about her OCD and not being weird about it, but still, mm-hmm. if they weren't dating, he'd be like, stop washing your grapes. But now that they are, he's like, Oh, it's all fine. I'll wash them with you. Um, yeah. So I want to like it in part because of Blaine's suspenders. I'm easy. And Kurt's little bow tie is like so interesting. It's like dip oh, yeah. or something, like dip dyed. It's very cute. Yeah. Their outfits are great. I will say the Glee costume department is maybe the only people who are paying attention. That was the yes. only there is yeah, there's more continuity in what the characters wear than what comes out of their mouth. There really is. And maybe one day we'll research and do like a deep dive into the glee costume department and point out the like red and yellow and the blue like well you know no yeah they really that would be they're the only ones that deserve any accolades they should have won awards (laughs) awards for doing a good job amidst yeah specifically that yes yeah in the midst of all their strife good for you guys um yeah. Do you have any before we get to our uh, indexes, indices, right? Indices. Do you have any favorite lines? Anything that stuck? Doesn't have to be. Sometimes things don't stick out, and you're just like, oh, whatever. Yeah, I actually didn't write anything down for a favorite line. Um, so nothing must have stuck out. Stuck out. Mine were from Beast again. Beast was just full of one-liners. I did not remember this. I did not remember loving Coach Beast so much, but um. First, she says, you bet your sweet bippy. <laughs> <laughs> but my real favorite line was at the beginning, she says, I kicked a fire hydrant when I found out Ace of Cakes was canceled, hence the crutches. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. Yeah. Oh, that one really got me. It's also very time specific. Like Ace of Cakes. <laughs> yes. Like it really took me back to that point in time when I thought about Ace of Cakes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I can only ever love. These are to celebrate you. <laughs> like, oh. oh. Yes. And the, you know, when you zig, when I think you're about to zag. Which I think is all I really wrote down. Although, well, I wrote it down because I thought it was interesting. If we go way back to the beginning of the episode with Mercedes' boyfriend, um, he says, You say you're Beyonce, but on the inside you feel like F. you White. I was like, I do appreciate someone calling her out for her faux um, confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like he, that boyfriend, God bless him, he has a name, is very underrated because I think he yes. genuinely did love and support Mercedes for like who she really was and like really saw yeah. her and understood her. This boyfriend is only for like a few episodes and then is never heard from again, I think. so. I think so, yeah. Which is a shame because he really seems to like yeah. her. Yeah. What a shame. Um, how is our Kevin McHale scale? Was he in this episode? Did he, did he do <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty low. It's a zero. He's not even in the episode, I don't think. I guess he was um, in the background. He does the audition. Yeah, for the auditions. So like a one. Yeah. But on the, uh, on the McHale scale... Oh, at a ten, it's point. Well, I, well, it, <laughs> on the McHale scale of one out of five, that's twenty percent. That's pretty fucking high. Should we do like a point five? We've given points, you know, half points yeah. before. I feel like a point okay. five. He, he showed up to work. <laughs> he, he was there. Cash that check. <laughs> yeah, we we give him props for cash, cashing that check. Isn't we do. Kevin the only one who was in every single episode or something? What? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. I so I guess he always gets a point five for attendance. <laughs> That's officially then the we lowest. Have to, thing. <laughs> That's because then we have to curve it. <laughs> and now point five is a zero, a six is a two. I don't know how curves work. <laughs> that sounds like math to me. You're doing I great. Can't. It's fine. All right. Thank what, you. what about our claim decks? Oh. It feels pretty good. I mean, they didn't. It's a good they didn't. Scene. It, it is a pretty good scene. The flower scene, and then um, Kurt like leans over to whisper in Blaine's ear at the <sighs> at the sing off, the diva off. This I, is the stuff that we were good at. <laughs> exactly. Botting it. Botting it. Yes. 
I yeah. so remember like the billion and 12 gifts that come out of just oh, yeah. them whispering and they're like and this was pre the new settings for tumblr so all the gifts were like maximum 500 yeah. megabytes or some shit so they were like grainy and small but you're like but they're leaning in and they're sitting next to each other i mean like if down. you ever tried to judge what happened in an episode based on what the tumblr content was you would think it was the clay show <laughs> right and sadly you really would because you'd see the same scene or the same like little clip in the background gift like i know 20 ways from sunday and you'd think it was the main focus of the scene yeah. and not realize that they were in like 0. 0.3 frames they're like literally over and to the side did, like zoomed it in in the back yes <laughs> <laughs> look they're walking in the background um literally. was that a seven <laughs> yeah literally uh, i think a seven's good yeah yeah a seven for like a really good scene but no I kids mean, especially a seven considering like we know how little we get in the future so i know yeah. i mean like i feel this. like it's technically an eight but they get knocked down for no kiss yeah i agree it's like the bar is really low yeah where do I or maybe it's a seven that gets knocked down to a six because they don't have a song I think the song really pushes it closer to 10. So I think we have to be sparing. All right. So we can do a six then. Okay. Six was my first thought. A six. Okay. 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 If they'd fucked on the staircase, it'd be at least a nine. (laughs) If they did it while singing. (laughs) That's the only 11 in the show. (laughs) Yeah. Acclaimed duet mid coitus. Well, there's not not that in the first time, so <laughs> it's true. True. Uh, so get ready it's, for the only eleven. It's not exactly that, but it's not not that. So it's not that. <sighs> um, great. Coulda, shoulda, woulda scale. <laughs> Is oh, this yeah. the thing now? <laughs> I mean, you can do it. Coulda. I mean, <laughs> My my like rating for that would have fully been based on somebody should have just looked at continuity, yeah, at all like at if only they'd been a script supervisor. Yeah, yeah. Like, why did Santana not get any kind of plot to get her back in the Glee Club? Or like, yeah. why did wasn't she kicked out? Uh, yeah, I thought she and like, she had like a face off after the yeah. piano incident. But she That'd just be decided cool, she was coming back. So yeah. So she's like, oh, because well. <laughs> she was otherwise occupied this week, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, I also put, I wish Mike's story should have been followed like post McKinley. Like, I think Mike would have been a great person to have in New York. Yeah. Well, yeah, he has like a career path. He can be a professional dancer, and if that doesn't work out, he becomes an instructor. Like, yeah, he was choreographer. Such a natural to be in New York. Like, I'm yeah. sad that Santana got picked over him. And I know it's just for, like, her sassy personality and one-liners. Like, right. Mike never really got many speaking parts. No. It's just rude. Yeah, what really is Santana going to fucking do in New York other than wait tables? <laughs> like, yeah, she doesn't have a drive. <sighs> I don't know. It's almost like the show is disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> almost like that, yeah. Almost. Well, I feel like I'm less bitter in this episode than the other episode, than the previous episode. Yes. This one was pretty, like, normal, if that makes sense. This was like, yeah, this is a Glee episode where some shit doesn't make sense. (laughs) Instead of being like, what the fuck is going on in this episode? So I feel like a solid, like, 40 on the coulda, shoulda, woulda. Like, I'm always at least a little little bitter. (laughs) I think it depends on how much Jack Daniels you've had is how much burr. Oh, I did. I am drinking a glass of red wine that my brother made. So shout out, you know, shout out to Emily's brother. Um, um, anyway, who did you guys think was the most fucked over in this episode? Ooh, I went back and listened gonna... to the previous episode. So I wrote down all the things that we added to the indices. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. it's just gonna be a 12 page index of i'm not mad comment it's very um scholarly it's a way to gauge you know rank the episodes for sure 
It does, yeah. Because you can't really rank them because they all suck. It's just a yeah. it's a suckitude. Exactly. Like, all the factors of suckitude. Yeah. Um, I feel like Kurt gets a little fucked over with the presidency. Mm. The well, the school class presidency, not the country presidency. We all got fucked over on that one. Um, the group fucking. <laughs> that's the Glee kink meme. Least fun orgy ever. Okay. I just think when there's silence, where everyone's <laughs> thinking about it, like, Ugh. yeah, just reflecting no. on that. Um. <laughs> Uh, I think Emma's a little fucked over for having such shitty parents and she's going to have to marry Shu. <laughs> I'm going to say I think Mercedes is the most fucked over there. Yes, this is probably true. Oh, for them not picking her for the musical? Totally. Yeah, yeah. And, all, and then also getting shit from like Shu everyone. for the one. Yeah. Yeah, really everyone. Yeah, I agree. I think Mercedes was the most fucked over in this particular episode, but I think Mike yeah. was the most fucked over long term. Since this is his yeah. one and only solo, one and only spotlight episode. That's true. That's all I got. Unless there are episodes that we've totally forgotten about that are going to happen. I think his parents, but... that, the parent storyline gets another mention. Like his mom comes to the show and his dad comes to the show. Spoiler alert. Oh, they do sit in the audience. Yeah. yeah and like, that's it. So it all works out for Mike. Yay. Yeah, I, I agree that Mercedes gets um, the shafting in this one. But it's equal opportunity. I also think <laughs> Emma and Kurt, no fun. No fun in this episode. Nope. Emma and Kurt really should just run off to like a different school. Just a different show. This one doesn't like what if Emma fun. becomes the headmaster at Dalton? Well, there's no teachers there anyways, so they right. could really use one. They could use a guidance counselor slash totally asexual queen who's not going to care about a school of boys. With great pamphlets. With excellent pamphlets. And those boys seem like guys who would read pamphlets. So I think that's the AU that we never really had was Headmaster Pillsbury of Dalton Academy. Pick writers if you're out there. Yeah, Mandy, if you're out there. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I suddenly can't read. <laughs> I don't know her. I I actually would read that though. I would too. I would read that. Um. All right. Well, we should probably actually wrap up the episode. Yeah. Yes, I think that's about it. And like, yeah. in a real way. Um. Yeah. I don't. I'm. I'm tapped out. I'm. I think we've said our piece on this episode. We didn't hate it. I don't think we loved it, but it was fine. Yeah. It was. It was fine. Especially in terms of Glee episodes. There wasn't as many main storylines that made me actually angry. Right. It was more like I got angry about the things that they completely forgot. But, you know, for watchability, it's fine. <laughs> That's another indice. Watchability. Eh. <laughs> so, meh. Didn't want to gouge my eyeballs out. Yay. Yeah. That's a pretty high bar, though, if you think about it for Glee. I love that, like, we know, and the listeners know, and we all know that this is, like, this is as good as Glee gets. Not this particular episode, but this this particular time in the Glee canon. Yeah. And we're like, you know, it it wasn't the worst. <laughs> <laughs> that's as, basically as good as it gets. Yeah, I think that's why we're still out here trying to reconcile our lives with Glee. <laughs> it's just, like... How could it have been so met, and yet we're still so attached? I still get those, like, oh, feelings when I watch the episodes, like, when my favorite characters are in situations, and I'm just like, oh, no. I was just so attached to these characters. How did, how did such terrible writers create such wonderful characters? I'm gonna say it was the actors. And that's, there we are. Okay. That's the one. <laughs> I'm gonna say, behold the power of acting. Not that I am like an actor stan. I don't want to start that discourse of actor choices versus writers. Because like, fuck that. I do not have time for that shit. But also the actors were better than Glee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of But them. have they transcended Glee? Hmm. <laughs> mm. uh. <laughs> for a minisode. That's, that's another episode. Um, well, 
great. I think we can call this episode um, finished. Yes. Coming up is a filler episode before we get to the first time. I honestly can't remember what comes next. Um, oh my god, that's right, because it's the the pot of gold. Oh, that's oh why. yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> it is literally a filler episode before we get to the good stuff. All right, well, that'll be fun. <sighs> I'm sorry for everyone listening who knows what's coming. But we'll get through it Maybe together. Maybe we'll be surprised. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get through it together. We're going to hold um, hands. We're going to kumbaya our way through Pot of Gold. Um, and maybe it'll only be a 20 minute episode. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? I'm sure we can find something else. Probably to talk- unrelated to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just be 20 minutes on the episode yeah. and 40 minutes on like what we had for lunch. We're pretty good at that. So um, it's a good bet. We are. Safe bet. It's true. Safe bet. Um, super. Well, I think I, I'm glad we got that off our chest for this episode. Um, any final thoughts before we depart? Nope. I think I am depleted of thoughts. <laughs> You've said your piece. All thoughts gone. All thoughts gone. Um, great. Well, thank you to everyone listening to this episode. Um, you can check out, we're going to do the, the stump speech because I guess we have to, I think it's the law for podcasts. Um, you can check our, our Patreon uh, which is just the same, just Glee on the Rocks, if you want our mini episodes, which is where we spend much longer than 10 minutes <laughs> talking about much more random and potentially juicy shit. Um, yeah, and I guess that's the end of the We will speech. take requests on what oh, you yeah. want to hear mini episodes about. Definitely. So. If you have requests, like, shoot them at us. We have every social media channel on the planet, except for TikTok, because homie don't play that. I can't I can't be fucked can't do it um yeah so you can hit us up if you have questions if you have concerns if you hate something we probably don't care um but if you love something you can definitely stroke our egos and let us know yes right everyone likes a little pat on the back Um, rate review subscribe (laughs) yes those were the words I was trying to think of and could not rate review and subscribe um because that's what life is these days. You're not leaving the house. We're not leaving the house. What else do you have to do but listen to us? Um, so stay safe and sane and healthy and wash your hands. We will catch you on the next episode. And I guess that's what you missed on Glee. <laughs>